Welcome to our review on specific latent heat. First thing, which is hopefully just a recap on work that you've done all the way back when you were really young in year seven, year eight, is just the change of states and the names of the processes that cause those change in states. So we have three states of matter we need to concern ourselves with, solid, liquid, and gas. And then we've got the six changes of state. So the processes that will occur to allow that change of state to happen. So if we start off with solid in the bottom left, to change it into a liquid, we melt it. To change the liquid to a solid, then we freeze it or solidify it. To change a liquid to a gas is vaporizing or boiling. And to change the gas back to a liquid is condensing. To change a solid to a gas is subliming. And to change a gas to a solid is depositing. So make sure that you do know those six different processes that allow us to change between solids, liquids and gases. The next favourite thing they like to ask you to do is to actually describe and explain the patterns shown by a graph like this. So this is a typical graph that we get of how temperature of a material changes over time when we're heating it. So we start off at the very bottom left there with our solid ice. So initially, as we start to heat it up, then what we're doing is we're increasing the temperature from minus 18 to zero. When we get to zero, you'll notice that the line levels off and becomes horizontal. We call that a plateau. So the reason it's going to plateau at zero is because that is the temperature at which ice melts. So all of the energy that we're putting into the ice at that point, as opposed to increasing the temperature of the object, is actually being used to break the intermolecular forces between the molecules. So the temperature stays the same, but the energy is being used to break intermolecular forces. Then once all of the ice has melted, we see that increase in temperature again, as the energy being put in is increasing the temperature of the water from zero all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius, at which point we get another plateau as the energy being put in is used to break the intermolecular forces once more and then the temperature will increase once they're all a gas. So make sure you remember that those horizontal parts on this graph are where the energy that's going into our actual chemical is being used to break the intermolecular forces between the molecules. What you can find is that on your exam, you could get two different specific latent heats. We have the specific latent heat of fusion, which is the energy transferred when one kilogram of a substance changes from the solid state to the liquid state or vice versa. So liquid to solid and the specific latent heat of vaporization, which is the energy transferred when one kilogram of a substance changes from the liquid state to the gas state or vice versa. So what you need to remember here is when we're talking about specific latent heat is the energy transferred when one kilogram of a substance changes. And then the second part of the actual definition there is about which state we're looking at. So fusion is solid to liquid changes and the vaporization are the liquid to gas changes. This brings us on to our equation. And again, the good news is that this is given to you on the physics data sheet. So remember to flip over that other bit of paper on your desk because it will have this equation for you. So thermal energy in joules is the mass in kilograms times by the specific latent heat in joules per kilogram. So a typical question you could find on your exam paper to do with specific latent heat is the one given here. Calculate the energy that you would need to melt an ice cube at zero degrees Celsius with a mass of 25.0 grams. Then you get this table. So the table that they will give you won't just have water and the one specific latent heat. It's going to have a range of materials and it will have the specific latent heat of fusion and the specific latent heat of vaporization. Because the first part of the challenge here is making sure that you can pick the right number from the table. So if we have a little look, first of all, when we read our question, we can see they're trying to trip you up first of all, because the mass is in grams. So step one, convert the mass to kilograms. So 25 divided by 1000 gives us 0 0.025. Then we need to select the right value from the table. So we're melting ice is what we're doing. So ice is made of water. So take the top row 
and then because we're melting that's a solid to liquid which means it's a fusion so the number we need is 334,000 so once we've got that information we can substitute it into our equation so 0.025 times 334,000 gives us our answer of 8,350 joules so just go careful to make sure that you are looking number one at the right material secondly the right specific latent heat whether it be fusion or vaporization and that you're remembering to convert any grams to kilograms they're the key ways that people trip up on these calculation questions hopefully at the end of this video you can describe what happens in changes of state including recalling the terms for the processes that take us between solids liquids and gases you can apply that equation for specific latent heat including selecting the correct values from a table and you can compare specific heat capacity and specific latent heat identifying the difference between them